Speaking section. The speaking section tests your ability to communicate in English in an academic setting. During the test, you will be presented with four speaking questions. The questions ask for a response to a single question, a talk, or a lecture. The prompts and questions are presented on time. You may take notes as you listen, but notes are not graded. You may use your notes to answer the questions. Some of the questions ask for a response to a reading passage and a talk or a lecture. The reading passages and the questions are written, but the directions will be spoken. Your thinking will be evaluated on both the fluency of the language and the accuracy of the content. You will have 15 to 20 seconds to prepare and 45 to 60 seconds to respond to each question. Typically, a good response will require all of the response time and the answer will be complete by the end of the response time. You will have about 17 minutes to complete the speaking section. A clock on the screen will show you how much time you have to prepare each of your answers and how much time you have to record each response. You will now be asked a question about a familiar topic. After you hear the question you will have 15 seconds to plan your response and 45 seconds to speak. Do you agree that teaching children is more challenging nowadays due to their extensive use of smartphones, social media, and online gaming? You will now read a short passage and then listen to a conversation on the same topic you will then be asked a question about the passages after you hear the question you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak you have 45 seconds to read the passage below. Listen to two students discussing this article. I can't believe I bombed that chemistry midterm. Maybe if I had some extra help, I wouldn't be in this mess. Hey, don't worry about it. Everyone struggles a bit in their first year. But there's good news. Did you hear about the new first-year tutoring program the university announced? No way. That sounds amazing. I could definitely use some help understanding those complex chemical reactions. Exactly. Remember how lost we felt last year trying to navigate all the academic resources? This program seems designed to address that. It'll connect freshmen with experienced upperclassmen who can explain concepts in a way that's easier to understand. Plus, it's free! Free tutoring? That's a game changer. I remember my friend at another university mentioning a similar program. He said his tutor was a lifesaver, especially during the first challenging semester. See? This program could really make a difference for freshmen by providing that extra support system. Having someone to answer questions and explain things in a smaller setting can be a huge advantage, especially compared to crowded lectures. You're absolutely right. I'm so glad they're launching this program. Maybe with some tutoring, I can still salvage my chemistry grade. The woman expresses her opinion about the proposal described in the letter. Briefly summarize the proposal. 
then state her opinion about the proposal and explain the reasons she gives for holding that opinion. You will now read a short passage and then listen to a lecture on the same topic. You will then be asked a question about the passage. After you hear the question you have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. You have 45 seconds to read the passage below. You may begin reading now. Now listen to part of a lecture in a psychology class. Today, we're going to explore the familiarity principle and its effects on our perceptions and preferences. The familiarity principle suggests that people tend to favor and feel more comfortable with things they are familiar with. Let me provide you with an example to illustrate this concept. Imagine you're browsing through a bookstore and come across two books. One's by an author you have never heard of, and the other is by your favorite author whose previous books you have thoroughly enjoyed. Which one are you more likely to choose? Most people would lean towards the book by their favorite author because they are familiar with their writing style, themes, and storytelling. The familiarity associated with the author creates a sense of trust and anticipation for a positive reading experience. This example demonstrates how the familiarity principle influences our choices and preferences. When we encounter something familiar, it activates positive associations and emotions in our brains leading us to perceive it more positively. It's essential to recognize that familiarity doesn't guarantee quality or superiority, rather, it impacts our initial impressions and biases. Explain how the example from the professor's lecture illustrates the concept of the familiarity principle.
You will now listen to part of a lecture, you will then be asked a question about it after you hear the question you will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Listen to part of a lecture in a biology class. Today, we're going to discuss the unique adaptations of frogs to survive in dry climate environments. Frogs are typically associated with wet habitats, but some species have evolved fascinating strategies to thrive in arid regions. Let me provide you with two examples to illustrate these adaptations. The first strategy is estivation, which is a deep state of dormancy that frogs enter during dry periods. During estivation, Frogs reduce their metabolic rate and become inactive, allowing them to conserve energy and water. One example of this is the Australian water-holding frog. This species burrows deep into the ground, forms a protective cocoon around itself, and enters estivation until the rains return. By doing so, it can survive the prolonged droughts of its habitat. The second strategy is called cutaneous water loss reduction. Frogs that employ this strategy have adaptations to minimize water loss through their skin. The spadefoot toad is a remarkable example. This species has a waxy layer on its skin that acts as a barrier, preventing water from evaporating. Additionally, spadefoot toads can reabsorb water from their bladder, further minimizing water loss. These adaptations enable them to thrive in desert environments where water availability is scarce. Using the examples from the lecture, explain two ways that frogs have adapted to survive in dry climate environments. 